grade 8 math number 7.2b. This whole chapter is about solving linear equations. And we're doing rational numbers. Now we're doing decimals. Solving linear equations that have decimals. To solve an equation with the same variable on both sides that has decimals, we start by multiplying the decimals by powers of 10 to remove the decimal points. We use the same steps to isolate the variable that we use for solving equations with integer coefficients and constants. We multiply both sides of the equal sign so the resulting equation has the same solution as the original equation. So if these words are confusing you, this is a term and this is a term. It's a variable term and that's a constant term. It's a variable term because it's got a variable in it. And this value changes depending on what that variable is worth. This is a coefficient. It's next to the variable. If the variable leaves, it's just a standalone number. It's not a coefficient anymore. See? And integers, I don't know if you remember from last year, but they're negative or positive whole numbers. And an integer coefficient is a negative or positive coefficient that is right in front of the variable here. See? So it would be like a positive 3x or a negative 3x. Those would be integer coefficients. Okay? Emma walked from her house to school at a constant rate. After walking 0.75 miles, she meets her friend Lisa, and they continue walking at the same constant rate. When they arrive at school, Emma has walked for 0.5 hour, and Lisa has walked for 0.2 hours. What's the rate in miles per hour that they were walking to school, that they walked to school? So, here's a little drawing. Whenever you're confused about a word problem, it's a really good idea to make a drawing out of it. So here's Emma's house, and she left her house and started walking towards school. She went 0.75 miles when she got to Lisa's. Now, it said after walking 0.75 miles, she met her friend Lisa. All right, so now they're, they went 0.75, and they're at Lisa's house. And they continued walking at the same constant rate. When they got to the school, when they arrived at the school, Emma had walked 0.5 hours that's half an hour, and Lisa had walked for two-tenths of an hour, see, from her house. So you already know right now that if from here to here is two-tenths, then that means from here to here must be three-tenths, right? So we don't need to know that, though. We could figure that out if we wanted to, but we're going to write an equation from the 0.75 miles, the two-tenths of an hour, and the five-tenths of an hour, okay? So, we write an equation for the distance from Lisa's house to school using the fact that distance equals rate times time. Remember, D equals RT, distance equals rate times the time. So we're gonna let L equal Lisa's walking rate, all right? That's what the L is. So Lisa's walking rate is 0.5 an hour, that's half an hour, all right? And, the distance to school is going to be 0.2L plus 0.75. See? Here's the 0.2L and here's the 0.75. And if you look, if you put the 0.75 together with the 0.2L, these are the same as the 0.5L, aren't they? It's the same thing. These two together are the same thing as the pink one. So we put that in our equation. The 0.2L plus the 0.75 are the same thing they equal the 0.5. See? So now we've got our equation. This is a distance to school, and that's the distance to school. And they both equal the same thing, whatever they are. So what we're going to do to get rid of these decimal points, the very first thing we need to do is we need to multiply both sides of this equation by 10 to the second power, which would be 10 times 10, right? That would be 100. We need to do it to each term. Okay? Now, we could have multiplied by 10, but that wouldn't have been enough to clear away all the decimal points. If we multiplied by 10, it would have worked for this one and this one, but it wouldn't have worked for this one. We would still had 7.5. So by multiplying it by 10 to the second power, 100, we definitely make sure we clear all the decimals for all the terms. Okay? It's using the distributive property. We're going to go 100 times 0.2L, 100 times 0.75, 100 times 0.5. See? So it's the distributive property to each one. So I just like to draw a little 100 up like this on the equation, and then I can do it. So 
0.2 times 100, we take the decimal point and we make it hop two times for the two zeros. We go 1, 2, and we put it here. So now we got a 20. See? We got 20L. The 0.75 gets two hops. The decimal point was here, and we go 1, 2. For every two exponent, that's how many hops we're going to do. See? So now the decimal point's back here, and we've got a 75 as a whole number. The 0.5 is going to make two hops, 1, 2, and now the decimal point's there, and we got a 50. So now our equation says 20L plus 75 equals 50L. Now we can use the inverse operation to solve it. We can subtract 20L from both sides, and this positive 20L and this negative 20L will create a zero pair, and it's gone. We've eliminated it. And then 50L minus 20L is 30L, and then we drop down the 75, and now, to isolate this L to one side, because 30L means multiplying, we're going to divide both sides by 30. See? And 30, by th 30 divided by 30 is a 1, so we get our friend the invisible 1. And 75 divided by 30. I did 75 divided by 30, and 30 goes into 75 two times, so I put the 2 up there. That's 60. Then I did my subtraction and got 15. And 30 can't go into 15, so I added a decimal point and another 0. And 30 goes into 150 five times. I did my subtraction. It came out even. So I know that the answer is 2.5, and that's what equals L. So the constant rate of speed while walking was 2.5 miles per hour. See? And make sure that when you're multiplying by the power of 10 that you're doing it enough to clear all the decimal points. So even if this clears just, just needs 1, tend to be multiplied to clear that decimal point. This one didn't. And they all need to multi be multiplied by the same power of 10. So it had to be bumped up to 100 so that it could be moved over. Okay? That's the biggest thing you've got to remember. All right? So that's solving linear equations that have decimals. And we're going to go on to the next video, 7.2c. I'm going to practice this some more. Okay? So if you have any confusion or any more problems, watch the next video and it'll help you and maybe you won't be so confused anymore. Now, if you're confused about the powers of 10, we're on chapter 7 now. See? We're doing linear equations in chapter 7. The powers of 10, we covered it back in this playlist back in chapter 2. So all the chapter 2 videos, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, and there's a 2.1a and b and a and b and a and b. So there's a lot of videos about powers of 10 that you could watch. Okay? If you don't know what they are at all, I'd start at the beginning. All right? And then that'll clear that up for you. All right? Okay, so we're going to go on, and we're going to make another video about this, and we're going to get a little more practice. Okay? I hope you're doing okay. We'll keep plugging away, and I'll see you there. Bye.